Hey, good afternoon, guys. Hope everyone is doing well out there. Thank you guys for hopping on the live stream today. Uh, yeah, if you guys don't know, we're going live on the channel every week. Kevin's going live Friday. I'm going live on Mondays. We're gonna keep it rolling through the summer. So appreciate you guys being here. Uh, it's been a it's been a beautiful day out here in Colorado. I was uh, actually out snowboarding in Breckenridge this morning. Yesterday was Keystone's closing day, unfortunately, but. Uh, Breck was actually a lot of fun as well. Um, they got another seven inches last night, so I think that brought the total for the last 72 hours up to 38 inches. So if you guys don't know, we've had a really, really slow start to the season out here in Colorado, but the end of the season just crushed it. I mean, I literally couldn't ask for anything more. Some of the best tree riding I've ever had in Colorado. It's been so, so fun out here. And if you guys have been keeping up with the channel, you know, it's been a pretty eventful week. Kevin was actually just down here in Colorado hanging out for the week. Um, I just brought him back to the airport yesterday, so he's back in Whistler now. Wish he could have stayed longer, love riding with that guy, but we'll be back shredding again soon. And uh, yeah, I think the next stop is going to be Mount Hood if you guys uh, have been hearing that on the channel. So definitely looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me guys, I'm just going to try to answer as many questions as I can today, so if you guys want to start dropping your questions, I'm going to scroll back up here in a little bit. Anything snowboard related, snowboard gear, um, just let me know. I'm going to try to get to all your questions if possible. If you have a question that's really important, you want to make sure it gets answered, you can do a super chat, helps to support the channel, and it highlights your question for me, so that'll make sure that I see it and that you get your question answered. So definitely check that out if you feel like it. As far as what I've been up to this past week, uh, you've probably seen some of the videos on the channel already. So we did some collaboration with Ryan Napton, David Jones from New Zealand was out here. We got out with Jonathan Buckhouse. We got all the YouTubers out. It was really, really fun. Super stoked we got to make that happen while Kevin was out here. Still got some videos to come from that. And honestly, the, the videos from the end of the trip with the storm are gonna be the best. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Other announcements, um, I did get one more batch of these hoodies in. So there's actually only just a few left. I put a link down in the description. I'm only shipping to the US and Canada. So if you want one, there's only a couple left and these are limited. So uh, it'd be really, really cool if you guys check that out. Be super stoked to have you guys repping some board archive gear. Uh, gonna be going live on Patreon after this live stream as well for 30 minutes. So uh, if you want to, it's a little bit more casual over there. If you wanna check that out, patreon.com forward slash board archive. Kevin has one as well that you should definitely check out. That's gonna be patreon.com forward slash snowboard pro camp. Uh, so yeah, we'll be doing a 30 minute live hangout after that. And I actually just got eight snowboards shipped out from Capita. Um, so I'm actually rocking a, a Capita windbreaker. They sent some apparel for me as well, super hyped on that. So they're all next year snowboards. That's gonna be the theme of the live stream over on Patreon if you wanna check that out. And uh, maybe help me pick which ones are gonna get videos and which ones are just gonna get the written reviews. I, I definitely would appreciate your input. So yeah, I think that about covers it. I'm gonna go ahead and start jumping into some questions. In motion SLB. What's up, guys? I'll be shredding with those guys next month with Kevin out in Oregon. It's gonna be super, super fun. Oh, but they're about to hop on a plane. Oh well, they'll have to watch the replay. Nirav and Yannick, what's up, guys? Kevin LePage. Robert Holshue saying, come to Trollhagen. Man, I would love to. I've never ridden any of the resorts out in the Midwest. Uh, Highland and Troll are probably top on the list, man. I think uh, I think rope toe laps out at Troll would be sick, man. I've always wanted to go out there. The edits out of there look super, super cool. JT Vivo, what's up, man? Luke F, Erica Constantino, hey, hey. Regular on the live streams here. Good to see you, Erica. Let's see. Daniel Z, you guys should hike up Keystone. You know, honestly, they have so much good snow out there today. Today is actually employee ride day. We were out there yesterday for closing day. Um, so the employees are living it up right now and probably the, the best employee ride day in history. <laughs> Literally like 30 inches of powder. There were so many good zones untouched yesterday when they closed. It was, it was sad to see, but you know, they got their contracts. They got to 
oblige or whatever. I wish we could get out there, but yeah, maybe I'll take the split board out there, man. There's definitely some fun zones I still want to hit up. John Peter Marachko, rate your season from one to 10. 10, man, hands down, this is the best season I've ever had. It's been incredible. Thank you guys so much for watching the journey and for being on the live streams. Uh, it means a lot. So we're gonna keep it rolling. Still got a lot of fun stuff coming up for the spring and the summer, and then we're just gonna do it even bigger next year. Tanner W, what's up, man? Ninja Turtle, Carrie Pierce, hey, Carrie. Hope you're doing well. Met Carrie out in Japan earlier this year. Alex Slater saying Whistler's been good this week. Awesome, man. Yeah, Kevin will be back up there, so uh, I'm sure he'll be enjoying some of those conditions out there, whatever they may be. Hopefully you guys get some snow. Ben R. asking if we're going to do any more collaborations with Jonathan Buckhouse. I definitely would like to continue to ride with him. Uh, so as long, you know, A Basin is going to be open until June 3rd, I think is their anticipated closing date. So um, yeah, as long as Jonathan keeps riding, I'm down to, to get out there with him. I'd love to. So we got uh, Shred1904, which I believe is Nirav's handle. Um, he's asking, which Capita boards will I review first and why? Um, man, so honestly, I, I asked for three boards and they sent me eight, which is really, really cool. Um, a little bit more work, but I'm down to put the work in. So um, I'm definitely gonna do the Kazu Kokobo Pro model. Um, that one's just been really highly requested. The Spring Break Slush Slasher. Um, I actually just put a post on Instagram asking which one you guys wanted to see reviewed first. And I had five people DM me within like 10 minutes and all they all said the Slush Slasher. So uh, Slush Slasher for sure. Also the Outsiders, um, or no, I'm sorry, the Outer Space Living. That was one that was probably the most requested capita board and uh, I never got my hands on it. So they sent that one out. So that one's going down and, and then there's a bunch more, but definitely those three. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do first. I think that's just going to kind of depend on the conditions, but I'll be out there every day for the rest of the season, uh, at least during the week. So stoked. Desmond. Where is Mount Hood? So Mount Hood is in Oregon, United States. It's probably the best destination in the world for summer snowboarding, or at least one of the best destinations in the world. Uh, really, really fun place. The lodge up there is called Timberline Lodge. Um, there's also a summer camp if you guys are interested in um, getting some some coaching and just uh, really, I think the one of the really cool things about their program is that they take care of everything from the moment you're at the airport to the camp for the whole trip so all you have to do is get to the airport and they take care of everything else so uh, Kevin and I will be there and our friend Garrett actually will be there for high cascade session one this season if you guys want to check that out uh, that's gonna be June 17th I believe it's late June so yeah high cascade really really fun times Ryan C, what size union binding for size 11 boot? I'm wearing Burton Imperials. Definitely want to go for a large binding. Um, yeah, size 11 and up, you want to get a large union for sure. And then me <laughs> asking if he needs a wide board if he's a size 11 boot, kind of a similar question. Um, yes, I 11 is where I cut the line and say definitely want to get a wide board. 10 and a half is already kind of pushing it. If you want to do some carving at least it's going to help out a ton so it looks like a super chat came through here uh cat 30 thank you for the super chat i appreciate it and she's asking uh or she says i just want to say i appreciate that you two are keeping this channel kids friendly uh, my 16 year old son just started snowboarding this season finally and he watches your videos for tips and tricks well done stay safe awesome cat no I i'm glad that uh your son is watching the channel and getting his skills up, hopefully progressing with the snowboarding and having a lot of fun out there. Uh, yeah, we definitely try to, uh, to accommodate all audiences. You know, we don't want to exclude anybody or, or make makes anyone feel like they're excluded. So definitely appreciate that, Kat. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching the videos. Inspire3 saying, TJ, just bought a jib saw after your video and I love it. Awesome, man. The jib saw is a really fun snowboard. 
I'm glad you're liking it. It's pretty cool like to get a, park, a pressable park board with that magnet traction so you can still rip around the rest of the mountain with confidence. The jib saw is pretty rad, man. Nicholas Gordon, do you shred in the summer? Uh, yeah, so the last two years, Kevin and I have been out at uh, Mount Hood um, snowboarding up on the snow field up there. We'll be back again this summer. Um, I've also done Whistler, the glacier up there, two years with Garrett. And that's actually how I met Kevin. Uh, so yeah, I've also done Hood uh, one other time uh, prior to Whistler. So I've been riding in the summers for a while now. It's, it's pretty rad. Um, but I think this year is going to be like the closest to year-round winter that I've ever had. We're going to definitely be snowboarding every month. We're going to make that happen. Oh, here's a cool question. HD gaming for you. Thoughts on indoor snowboarding? Uh, yeah, man, I think if that's if that's the most accessible snowboarding to you, I think it's awesome. Uh, Kevin and I were able to ride the Hemel Snow Center over near London um, on our Europe trip back in January. We're out there with Nirav and Yannick, the InMotion SLB guys, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's really cool to just be in the middle of a city and be able to snowboard and you know the community out there was awesome they're so into it and they had some really fun features and i think it's really cool that it's open year round too so even if it's like 100 degrees out summer you can go in there in the fridge and ride and you know they've got a park set up they've got um, you know it's a pretty short hill so you can't really do much carving but uh, it's fun for sure good on you it's it's leaps and bounds way better than artificial snow turf like snowflex that is for certain. Exonomical, when do you think uh, Keystone will close this year? I have a lift ticket and need to get up before it ends. Also A Basin, haven't been to either of these yet. So unfortunately, man, Keystone closed yesterday. They're done. Um, it's a shame they got so much good snow up there, but yeah, they're, they called it yesterday for the final day. A Basin's gonna be open into June though, so definitely hit that up. A Basin's a ton of fun. Christian Friedrich from Bavaria, Germany. Awesome, man. My family's from Bavaria. That's really cool, man. Thanks for watching the videos. I'm glad you're on here. My uh, uncle lives in Munich. Kyung Kim 805 asking if they honor season passes at different resorts. Um, so in Colorado, we have the Epic Pass, which is owned by Vail Resorts. Um, so if you guys don't know, Vail is buying up loads and loads of resorts. They own a ton of them, um, especially here in Colorado. You know, Arapaho Basin, Keystone, Breckenridge, Vail, and Beaver Creek, all within 30, 45 minutes of each other, all on the Epic Pass. Um, so depending on the pass you have, yes, you can use it at different resorts. The Icon Pass is looking pretty cool for next year as well. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get it, but I think, you know, you get Copper, Bear, and Mammoth on that one. So that one looks pretty rad as well. You get a lot more than that, but those are some of the highlights for me personally. Ty USA, what up, man? Good to see ya. Hope you're doing well, dude. Hopefully we'll get up uh, and shred next season some more. Met those guys out in uh, Mammoth this year. If you guys are looking for snowboard tutorials in the Thai language, that's what they're all about. Check them out. The Riddick, 133456. What up, man? Thanks for being here. Justin Vasey on the live stream. Good to see you, Justin. Hope you're doing well today, man. Appreciate you hopping on all the live streams. He's uh, joining us out of LA here today. Uh, Brennan, what's up, my dude? Um, I am not going to be shredding Breck this weekend. So he's just asking if I'm going to shred Breck this weekend. Um, I will be in Denver this weekend, but I will be out snowboarding all week and all next week. So um, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it for Breck closing day either, unfortunately. But uh, if you're able to, to ride during the week at all, I will see you out there, man. Uh, definitely hit me up. Brennan's a local here in Summit. I got to meet him the other day at Keystone. Rad kid. Shredder. Nicholas Gordon, favorite place to shred in the U.S. Man, I think this season it's been Keystone. I, I really, really love that mountain and the community out there. They just have, a, you know, pretty much anything you want. Um, Breck has better alpine uh, if you want to make a hike if it's open, but overall I'd say I like Keystone the most. Um, in the summer, Mount Hood is where it's at. And I also really like Bachelor. 
Bachelor's a lot of fun. Ooh, uh, Gang Chang Lu asking uh, if we're gonna make a hoodie with a zippered pocket, um, with a zippered hand pocket. I I actually have a Volcom hoodie like that. It's it's tattered up now. I don't wear it anymore, but it was my favorite hoodie for a while. Uh, maybe I'll look into getting some of those made next year. That's a good idea, man. But that's gonna be a higher price point. But uh, but yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yo, what's up, Bo? Uh, Bo, you may have seen him in some of the Japan videos, maybe some of the Colorado videos this week. One of my best friends hopping on the live stream. So stoked you're on here, man. Uh, and Bo's just asking how the POW was today. It was good. I, uh, I rode Narnia trees on peak seven most of the morning. Looking really, really good in there. Honestly, I think it's the best that I've ever seen Narnia trees because, um, you know, we got 38 inches of snow. So on a snowboard, um, especially on like kind of shallower terrain like that, it's not super steep in those trees. You can get stuck really easily. But this is the third day. People have been kind of going through there, uh, kind of forming a snake run through there. So it's probably the perfect powder conditions for trees because you can hop on the snake run and have a lot of fun keeping your speed up but then there's powder all over so if you want to do a pow bash face shot whatever um it's just right on the side and then you can dip back in the snake run and pick your speed up again so it was sick man i also did a t-bar uh, got a pretty good lineup there and then they opened up imperial today um, for the first time in this storm i was a little late it was kind of tracked out but it was still really fun up there too so yeah epic day out at breckenridge any of you guys out here in colorado hope you guys are enjoying the storm we deserve it we really really needed it so super stoked that this happened i mean it's crazy just a weather straight from hawaii to colorado just dumping on us it's awesome Champ Lindahl from Boulder, Colorado. What's up, man? Good to see you. And Eric Kim asking if I've ever been to Stevens Pass in Washington State. Uh, nope, I've never actually snowboarded in Washington. I'd really like to. Um, Baker, I think, is top on the list. Also, Alpenthal looks like a lot of fun. Um, definitely hope to, to get up there. And then Champ also asking if the Icon Pass or the Epic Pass is better. Man, that's, uh, that's your call. I, I will say I'm getting the Epic Pass because of Whistler. Um, that's kind of a deal breaker for me. I really wanna to spend a lot of time in Whistler next year. And uh, yeah, the Icon is sick though, you know? Um, like I said, the three, the three biggest highlights for me on the Icon are Copper, uh, Mammoth, and Bear. You get unlimited riding, no blackout dates, and then you get some days at Jackson Hole too, which is really, really cool. Adam uh, Fedorniak says he saw us out at Hemel. Awesome, man. Uh, saw, saw us ride some No Bad Day boards. Um, what would you recommend for freestyle? Yeah, so actually, uh, the Chris Chris Wells, No Bad Day. Um, he's the No Bad Day snowboards rep out in uh, for the UK, and uh, he brought out some No Bad Day boards for us. Um, I've ridden a few of them, some, some solid boards for sure. Um, for freestyle, um, honestly, for No Bad Day, I, I don't know all the models off the top of my head, um, but they do make some fun freestyle stuff. I'll say that the... Um, Max Perot Pro model is a little intense. It's more of a jump board. It's pretty dang stiff, um, but they have a lot of fun freestyle options, man, for sure. I would say my favorite um, kind of all around freestyle board right now is the Battalion Evil Twin. Exonomical asking if there's any way to switch the Keystone Pass to an A Basin Pass. I don't think so, man. Maybe you could give them a call. They might let you, um, but I, I have no idea. Miranda Hutchings, do you post your live streams after you finish them? Yes, all the live streams you've ever done are available on the channel to rewatch. So, you know, of course, everybody's not able to hop on the live stream. We got people uh, joining us from all over the world. So there's time constraints, you know, people got jobs, we got things going on, people are out snowboarding, things like that. Uh, so yeah, they're all posted on the channel. If you ever wanna go back and watch the replay, they're there. All right, Zacharias says, yo TJ, after 10 years of snowboarding, I've decided to get my own board, but I'm kind of torn between the Burton Custom and the Battalion Goliath. Not a big part guy, but looking to get into it. 
Um, honestly, man, I think the Burton Custom is gonna be a better option for you. I was actually just on that board the other day. I have a powder test coming to the channel soon on that board, so uh, stay tuned for that. The Goliath is, is good for all mountain for sure, and, but it's kind of aggressive for park. Um, depending on how, how big of a dude you are, you know, the Goliath is heavy, heavy camber, and it's pretty stiff. Um, so it's not going to be super pressable. It's going to be more of a jump oriented park board. The custom's more of a solid do it all, all around style board. Uh, especially one of my favorite things about the custom is that it, it actually does pretty well in powder. Uh, and it's really fun in the park too. And that's because it has a setback stance. It's got a 12 millimeter setback, um, but it's a, a twin flex and it doesn't have a taper so if you shift that stance forward it feels exactly like a true twin uh, really really fun for park riding and it's not super stiff um, you know it's got some solid stability but it's not crazy stiff um, the goliath is going to be stiffer that'd be my two cents on that all right guys Sick. So I see we got 138 people here. We're already up to 60 likes. If you guys want to drop a like on the video, I appreciate it. If we can get it up over 100, I'd be super stoked. Helps other people find it. And yeah, I, I really appreciate it, guys. Um, and let's see, Razor, Razor Blazer 18. Uh, hey, do you have any tips for building a summer setup? Um, I've never actually built a proper summer setup with like AstroTurf and a rail and a drop-in and all that stuff. Um, I mean, if you would have to be pretty solid with construction to really build a solid one for your snowboard. But uh, my personal favorite little uh, thing that I like to do in the summer, at, at home at least, is uh, what I call the jib trainer. It's like a balance, a homemade balance board um, with your feet strapped to it. So there's a video on the channel. If you guys wanna check that out, I highly recommend it. It's one of the most fun things you can do with your friends in the off season or even during the season at home um, to practice your balance and your, your rail tricks. Uh, the video is called the Ultimate DIY Snowboard Trainer. So definitely check that out if you're inclined. Uh, HD gaming for you, steep terrain or mellow? Hmm. Um, for powder, steeper terrain is typically always more fun, but the steeper that you go on powder, the more dangerous it gets. So in the resort, you don't really have to worry. There are, you know, ski patrols out there keeping it safe. Um, but yeah, for park, uh, mellower terrain is better. Uh, Whistler actually has their park on really, really steep terrain. And uh, yeah, mellower park is a lot more fun as long as you have enough of a slope to, to pick up speed when you need it. All right, I think I saw another super chat come through here. A couple of super chats, thanks guys. So we got Sly Dog with the super chat. What's up, Sly Dog? And he's asking, any tips on how to combat mogul-like mounds? Uh, recently rode Whistler and Skiers had left these around on Spanky's and Ruby Bowl. Yeah, man, so ungroomed terrain pretty much immediately becomes moguls on powder days. Um, you know, oftentimes on mountains you can find sections that are just all bumps and all moguls. I would say, you know, depending on the board you have, it can, some snowboards can make it a little bit easier to go through moguls, but um, you can get through them fine on any board. The thing that I find that helps me the most, uh, first of all, you really wanna use your knees a lot. Keep your knees bend, bent and use your knees as like shocks. You wanna constantly be absorbing those bumps and those turns with your knees. And obviously you can't just straight line through it because typically mogul fields are pretty long and you get so much speed by the bottom, it would just be way too sketchy. So you wanna be controlling your speed through there. So what I like to do is kind of point it straight for a second towards a mogul and the soft snow tends to be right on the mound. So then do a big slash on the mogul and then dip back into the kind of snake run through the moguls onto the next one and try to get a flow going where it's like heel side, toe side, and I'm constantly bashing those moguls to control my speed and swiveling through them. That's what I think is the best way. It's definitely very, very high energy snowboarding. It's not, no easy task. So good luck, man. And yeah, it, it oftentimes is also icy between the moguls. So um, I try to stay away from them, but if I do wind up in there, that's what I wind up doing. And uh, yeah, I hope that helps you out, man. Moguls can be fun sometimes if you're looking for it. And then we got Martin Walgren with the super chat. Martin, 
Thanks, man. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, Martin's on most of the live streams here. Good to see you. And he says, uh, the hill is open an extra weekend here. One last old man shredding session this season. Uh, I'll make sure to get a three on video. Hashtag burrito fund. Thanks, Martin. Appreciate it, man. I'm going to go grab a burrito after this live stream. I, I live right uh, near a Chipotle, so I'm literally going to run down there and grab a burrito. I'm, I'm pretty hungry. Thanks, man. Um, yeah. Uh, once you get it posted, I'll check it out. Let me know on Patreon or something or on the next live stream, and I'll definitely check it out, dude. Glad you got an extra week. It's always some good news. Keeping the shred alive for one more weekend. Caleb Jones, do you play Fortnite? I have played Fortnite, um, but I don't play that many video games anymore. I stay pretty busy um, with the editing and the, and the snowboard reviews. Um, I try to relax in my downtime. Um, I guess video game video games are definitely a form of relaxing, but uh, no, I don't really play Fortnite, man. I've only played it once. It was fun though. It's a pretty cool concept. Heinrich Santiago, what's up, Heinrich? Do you buy used snowboards? Nah, man. I you know with the board reviews, I I really am always trying to be on the most current snowboard that I can. So uh, all the Capita boards I have right now are actually next year's. So a little bit of a sneak peek there for you guys. And uh, yeah, I I try to get rid of any boards that I have that are older. Other than my forum, I'm gonna keep that thing forever. The Riddick, 133456, burrito fun, dude. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Looks like I'm going to be feasting at Chipotle today. Thank you, guys. Kiara Ronner saying she just got her first board binding and boot set up. Awesome, Kiara. Yeah, that's going to be a game changer for you. If you're hopping off rental equipment, I mean, having properly sized gear that's kind of meant for what you want to be doing, it's like night and day. BL1, Travis Rice Pro for carving, question mark. I think, yeah, definitely. It's a really fun snowboard for carving. I know Kevin has really been enjoying his. That's one of his personal boards this season. Um, actually, if you go back on the channel and watch the carving session video, um, which would have been filmed in December, um, Kevin is laying over some heavy carves on the T-Rice Pro. So yeah, it's got that magnet traction. It's got some decent stability to it. Definitely a fun carver for sure. Ooh, people curious about the Capita board. So Adam Lamb asking if I got the 19 DOA. You know I did, Adam. You know they sent the DOA. I've done a video on the DOA the last two years though, so I don't know if I'm gonna do a proper board review on it or just kind of feature it in another video. We'll see. Emilian Popov, what's up, Emilian? I appreciate you being here, man. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, and he's just adding to the burrito fund. Thank you, my dude. Maybe I'll be able to get two burritos. Save one for tomorrow or just go back tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for the super chats, guys. Ooh, here's a question that I don't think anyone's ever asked. Uh, probably, I don't know, I've done so many live streams at this point, it's hard to remember. Kevin LePage, rocker dominant or camber dominant boards? Camber dominant through and through, that's my preference. Um, I definitely can still appreciate rocker boards. They have their place, they can be fun. I've ridden a good bit of rocker boards this season and I've definitely enjoyed them, but personally, I prefer camber. And yeah, there might be a video elaborating on that later this season with the two weeks we have left. <laughs> oh man. Tyler Harris coming through with a really fun question here on the super chat. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, Tyler asks, what are your all time favorite lift slash runs in Summit or Eagle County? Um, so I will say uh, my all time favorite run at Breckenridge um, is the run I was hitting this morning and it's called the Narnia trees it's on peak seven I'm not gonna tell you guys where it is I don't want it to get too blown up maybe if I see you in person I'll tell you where it is but uh yeah peak seven independence chair has some really really fun trees um, Keystone I think North Bowl is my favorite run um, let's see I don't really have a favorite at Arapahoe Basin 
Um, the steep gullies were really fun out there. Um, but yeah, I'd say, you know, Keystone and Breck are kind of my, my two most frequented resorts. And th those are my favorite zones there for free riding at least. They, they have an excellent park as well, obviously, but I'm not gonna choose the park as my favorite run. Desert Wind 16, do you know how resorts determine when to end the season? So uh, I think it, it definitely varies resort to resort. Um, in Colorado, the resorts actually lease the land from the state. So they kind of have a contract that's in place at the beginning of the season. So regardless of how the conditions are, they have their closing day. So that's why Keystone closed yesterday, unfortunately. Thank you for all the questions, guys. Got lots of questions rolling through. AWCK0392, do another review. Oh, I will, man. I got, I got reviews on deck coming up, don't you worry. Uh, the next review is gonna be uh, the Burton Custom Powder Test. So I hope you guys enjoy that one. Nicholas Stees, another uh, inquiry as to what Capita has sent out, uh, asking if they sent the Capita Ultra Fear. And yes, they did. And I actually plan on doing a video on that one because I honestly really, really like that snowboard. And I think it's super underrated. Um, I don't think enough people are riding it. The Ultra Fear is sick. So I'm definitely gonna get a video out on that and just uh, try to showcase how fun it is. Sly Dog with the reply from the Super Chat. Legend TJ, uh, that's how I dealt with the moguls. I missed out on hitting Spankies with fresh snow. Look forward to seeing you at Perisher. Uh, if you're looking for boards to test, reach out to Rhythm or ESS. Awesome, I assume those are board shops down in Perisher. Thank you, man. I definitely would love to keep the board reviews rolling when we're down in Australia. Um, we don't have anything on the books yet, but the plan is to be out there towards the end of August, beginning of September. So I appreciate it, man. Um, sorry you didn't get that fresh snow up in Spankies, but I uh, hope you still had a good time, man. I hope you stopped at the bottom and uh, fed the, the whiskey jacks. The birds down there will fly onto your hand. It's pretty awesome. Ah, here's a, another fun question. So uh, Adam Fedorniak, I went to film when I went away last week, but uh, struggled as worried about the gimbal. Do you focus more on riding or where the camera is when you're filming slash riding? Um, so I definitely focus, I mean, it's, it's a balance, man. I would say it's kind of 50-50 on both, maybe a little bit leaning more towards the filming just because a lot of times, you know, especially with all the traveling Kevin and I do, we get like one shot at a really cool epic run and I don't want to blow the shot. So I'm really focusing on the filming. Uh, the gimbal does uh, help a lot though, make keeping it smooth and, uh, you know, just take some practice and then you'll get be able to get more confident with your riding with the gimbal. But uh, it's definitely challenging. I think honestly, uh, riding with the gimbal is becoming one of my favorite things in snowboarding. It's just really rewarding to see the footage and it's a nice, it's a fun new challenge. So yeah, definitely just keep practicing, man. You'll get it. I'm sure your footage came out great. Justin Vasey. What's your opinion on the Arbor Coda Camber? My best friend just bought one. Uh, I like Arbor boards. I actually have never ridden the Coda Camber, but I know I know a good bit about it. Um, so it's gonna have the uprise fenders and, and the camber system. So it's a full camber board, um, which I'm a fan of. I do know that I, that is the stiffest snowboard on their line. Um, so it's, it's pretty aggressive. So I hope that's what he was looking for. But yeah, if you're looking for like crazy stability, something that's, you know, maybe fun for jumping and all mountain and, you know, it's got the grip tech, so it's gonna do well on ice. Definitely a sick all mountain ripper. Caleb Jones, do you have a ride board? Uh, I, I do actually. I rode the uh, ride kink back in 2014 when I was in North Carolina uh, for the 1314 season, and I actually still have it. That's the one other old board that I hang on to because it's just my rock board now. Um, it's so beat up. Um, but yeah, they've changed it quite a bit since then, um, but it has one of my favorite graphics, so I've held on to it and I just kind of take it out when I'm, you know, know that the snowboard's probably gonna get beat up a little bit.
Catherine Sow, have you tried the 19 Jones flagship? Is it lighter than the 18 or should I just get the 18 flagship? I have not tried the 19 and I am not sure if they changed it. You know, if they changed the core to a lighter wood, then I would imagine it probably is lighter. I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference on the board's performance, honestly, but the flagship is one of my favorite free ride boards. So uh, that's cool that you're looking at that one. I would say go for it. It's, uh, it's a really fun one. Art Thomas, what's up Art? Good to see you, man. Hope you're doing well. And he's asking if the Global Warmer Review is dropping soon. Can't believe you missed us at Keystone yesterday. What a day though. Yeah, man, we were kind of just, you know, we had our group and we were just kind of sending it through the trees. Uh, my friend Bo was actually kind of um, giving us a, a bit of a, a tour. Um, I know a lot of the zones, but there was one zone that he knows much better than I do and he was taking us through there. Um, but yeah, epic day, man. At least, you know, I'm glad you got to shred it. It was super, super fun. All time Keystone conditions. I mean, crazy. Um, and yes, the Global Warmer review is going to be dropping pretty soon. Um, the Burton Custom Powder Test is going to come first, um, but I would say, you know, definitely within the next uh, week or two, you'll see the Global Warmer video pop up. Had some fun days on it for sure. All right, Mauro Gorno, carving board, question mark? Um, so, I mean, I will say there's a few things that make a board really fun for carving, in my opinion. Personally, I enjoy carving on snowboards that have camber in the profile, either full camber or like camber between the feet. Um, the K287, which I'm riding this year, is really, really fun for carving. Um, it's camber between the feet, rocker in the nose and tail. Um, so camber gives you that stability. A setback stance and a taper kind of help make the board more maneuverable and also help you to set a really strong edge. So I like those features in carving boards. Um, and probably the biggest thing uh, that if you're looking to really lay over turns and, and aggressively Euro carve, like laid out, having a wide snowboard is gonna help the most. So yeah, those are kind of the things that I look for um, for carving snowboards. So uh, there's a, a lot of boards like that out there. Uh, the K287, the Burton Deep Thinker, um, the Ride War Pig I think is really fun, even though it doesn't have a setback, um, but it's really wide, so it's really fun for carving. Uh, the Slush Lasher, there's a lot of good boards out there for sure. And you know, the ultimate is gonna be the Donek Napton Twin, obviously. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be kind of a custom board at a much higher price point. But if you're looking for the ultimate groomer carver, check that thing out. Rusky, how's the pop on the Never Summer Prototype 2? It's pretty good, man. You know, it's a rocker dominant board, so you do got to reach the end of the rocker profile before you start to load up any tension in the board to get pop, but uh, it's got some pop to offer for sure, man. The 87 is a lot of fun. All right, Shelby Kaiser with the super chat. Thanks, Shelby. Thanks for all the videos. Uh, do you know of a woman's board with a good flex for presses? Hashtag adorable TJ. Oh gosh, I, I, is that gonna be a thing now? I'm cool with that, I guess. Um, I would say the battalion push-up comes to mind. I think that one would be a lot of fun for you. Um, let's see, the Capita Space Metal Fantasy, which is kind of like similar to the horoscope could be a lot of fun too. Um, hmm. You could also look at like the Arbor Cadence. That one could be a lot of fun for you as well. I think those would all be good options. But yeah, that's sick. You're looking uh, looking to get into some pressy situations, maybe get in the park. Good on you, Shelby. Adventure Spirit One with the super chat. Thank you. Yo, dude, you guys inspired me to really learn how to ride after six years of going half at it and fear. I'm so pumped. Thanks for keeping ego low for the noobs. Oh man, dude, so glad to hear that, man. It's always inspiring to hear that we're helping you guys out. You know, that's the whole goal with the channel and the board reviews is just, we want to provide value. We want to get you guys stoked on snowboarding and we want you to feel confident out there. So thank you, man. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great season, dude. Paul O with the super chat. Thanks, Paul. Listening to this feed while cleaning the bike for the summer. Small thanks for making the season rock. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate it, man. 
yeah, it's crazy. Summer's here. It's, it feels weird. I don't want the season to be over, especially with all the snow we just got. But yeah, I hope you enjoy the, the rides on the bike, man. Have a great summer. And we'll definitely be seeing you out at uh, Park City next year, man. I can't wait. It was good to meet you this year. All right, back, back to the regular questions. Carlos Villanova. Hi, TJ. Any thoughts on the Union Contact Pro? Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I rode the Contact all last season. I'm on the Force this year. I really, really enjoyed the Contact. It's definitely a nice, uh, fun, surfy binding. Really, really good in the park, but you can really take it anywhere and have fun with it. So uh, the Contact Pro is going to be the same performance that you expect out of the Contact, but it's going to be lighter. Uh, so you're, you're, it's just going to kind of give you a little bit of a more high performance setup. Um, if you're looking for the top of the line, go for the Contact Pro for sure. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely worth it if you're going between the Contact and the Contact Pro. Go for the Contact Pro. <clears throat> Thanks for all the questions, guys. They're still rolling in. We've made it over 100 likes. Thank you. Can we get to 150? All right, Emma99801. Hey, TJ, toe turn tips on steeper shoots. Um, so, transitioning from heel to toe on really steep runs can be sketchy. You really want to focus on where your weight is and just really pay attention to your edges and really be in full control mode, no risking it. Um, so, I would say when you're on your toes, uh, you know. Uh, try to keep your weight kind of more forward, leaning into the mountain. If you get too far back and you hit a bump or something, it can actually throw your weight back beyond that breaking point and cause you to start tumbling down the hill. So I would say the biggest thing is keep your weight a little bit more leaned towards the mountain on your toe edge. That way, even if you do hit a bump and it kind of knocks you back a little bit, you're not going to just start tumbling down the hill. Awesome. <laughs> Malpractice time. Uh, hey, TJ, thinking of getting the Evil Twin, how is it? The Evil Twin is awesome, man. Highly recommend it. If you're looking for a freestyle focus board that's good on jumps, good on rails, and still fun outside of the park, check it out. It's uh, one of my favorite boards of the year. Absolutely. Uh, the Riddick. 133 456 thank you for another super chat man killing it today um hey tj what do you think of the skate banana uh so yeah the libtech skate banana um it's very similar to the gnu carbon credit which we do have a video on if you want to check that out um i i think you know it, it has that btx the rocker profile from libtech so it's the most rocker um it's a very soft flexing snowboard as well so i definitely would consider it an entry level snowboard it's going to be really easy to control it's going to be very forgiving it's going to be catch free it's going to be pressable but it's not going to be super stable um, so honestly i think there are better options um, for entry level boards i like the arbor formula personally um, it's cool that you get magnet traction on the skate banana, but the rocker is so aggressive on it that it, it just kind of uh, puts a bad taste in my mouth. But I think, you know, if you really like it, it's definitely a fun board to learn on. It's going to be easy to control and get those fundamentals down. Rob Gams. TJ, can you set the bindings back on a true twin? Hinting towards the Capita DOA for powder performance. Yes, um, so I will say if you wind up on a groomer, say like traversing from run to run, it's gonna feel weird. It's not gonna be riding like the true twin that you're used to, but you definitely can do it and I would recommend it if you're trying to make a true twin work on these powder conditions. Um, definitely set your stance back on a true twin board. It's gonna keep your weight back, keep that nose up and just make your powder day that much more fun. William Ingram, any experience with the Jones Hovercraft? Thanks, thanks, brother, and keep ripping. Thanks, William. Uh, so I haven't ridden one of the newer versions of the Hovercraft since they added the spooned out nose and tail. Um, I rode an older one, I think the year before they start introduced the, the, the 3D base. But um, it's really, really fun, man. Honestly, I really enjoy that one as a powder board. It's really fun for carving as well. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for like a powder free ride board, the Hovercraft is pretty sick. 
and my buddy Joseph Tony actually did the artwork on it this year so it's a it's a good looking board too you should check it out all right just scrolling through some questions here guys got a lot coming in Hey, uh, Defnox asking, uh, hey TJ, Jones Mountain Twin and Malavitas, will it be a great all round set? Uh, yeah, honestly, man, the Jones Mountain Twin, it's like that that uh, nice blend between free ride and freestyle. Um, I would say it's, it's like a free ride leaning board that's still fun for freestyle, but more so I would say on like natural features, you know, popping 180s on side hits, you know, doing cliff drops, spinning in, in on natural features, that type of stuff. That's why it's got that twin setup. Um, if you're gonna be riding a lot of park, I think that there's definitely way better options, um, but it's got some good stability. It's really, really fun snowboard. Uh, the Malavitas are great too, but I would not recommend pairing it with Burton bindings. If you already bought them, so be it. You make it work, it'll still be a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> excuse me but you do sacrifice a little bit of side to side adjustability on your stance width on Burton bindings on a non Burton snowboard. So you can't dial in your stance width as proper as you can on most other bindings. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why I stick with union. One of them, there's a lot of reasons. Hi TJ, what's a good pair of first bindings to own from Joel? I think if you're looking for just a budget setup, you're, you're on your first board, you're not trying to spend a ton of money, the Union Flight Pro is the way to go. Otherwise, I would throw you on the Union Contact. Uh, Sword Van Gaal, Deep Thinker or War Pig for powder? Deep Thinker, hands down, man. The War Pig is sick, it does well in powder, but the Deep Thinker definitely definitely trumps the war pig and powder no doubt both fun boards though in their own right mugabo from barcelona any special feature on a snowboard for indoor snowboarding uh not really man honestly you know when you're indoor snowboarding you're still on real snow i mean it's artificial snow but it's like it's real um so yeah i think everything that applies on a mountain applies for indoor snowboarding Kim Nebro, TJ, I've ever tried skis before and how was it? I've only skied two times in my life and uh, I actually had a lot of fun. Um, both times at Breckenridge and you know, I wasn't very good at it. Um, I, I will say, you know, I could, I did, I was able to kind of just hop on the skis and, and go down the mountain um, just because, you know, once you have snowboarding or skiing down, you kind of understand the mechanics of edge control. So I picked that up pretty quickly, but um, I definitely, was struggling a little bit. I fell. Um, it was just kind of like a fun new way to approach the same mountain. I enjoyed it. I haven't skied this year, but maybe I'll do one ski day. All right, we got another super chat in here from Brett Mickey. Brett, thank you for the super chat. Uh, thanks to the Board Archive gear guide, I bought the GNU Carbon Credit ASIM as my first ever snowboard. Do you have recommended boots and bindings? Brett, that is amazing, man. You're actually the first person to ever call out that you that the gear guide has helped you. Um, yeah, if you guys don't know, I do write a gear guide every year as well. I, last year was the first year, but I'm gonna do another one this year. So it's just a free PDF um, that you can download. If you guys are curious, you wanna check out what I said for the 2018 boards, maybe you're out there looking for some deals, boardarchive.com slash gear guide. It's a free download. I'd be super hyped if you guys check it out. Brett, you the man, thank you for, uh, for checking it out. And I'm really stoked that it was able to help you out, man. Um, so yeah, I, like I said earlier, the carbon credit is a pretty solid entry level snowboard. So good, good choice for your first board, man. And as far as boots and bindings go, I would say, you know, it's on boots. It's good to kind of go more to that mid range, those entry level boots. They might be comfortable in the store, but they're not going to do well after, you know, 20, 30 days on the hill, they're going to get real soft. Um, so the uh, 32 Lashed is one of my favorites. Um, I would recommend checking that one out. Uh, the K2 Darko, um, that one's a really good one as well. 
Um, hmm, I'm trying to think of boots that aren't too crazy expensive. So those are all sub 300. Um, you could also check out the Ride Lasso or the K2 Masis. Um, those are both at the $300 price point though. Um, and as far as bindings go, I would, uh, I would say the Union Contacts are probably the top binding I would throw you on. Um, but if you're looking to, to save a little money on the bindings, go for the Flight Pro. I would say spend more on the boots and less on the bindings if you have to. CJ Explored with the super chat. Thanks, CJ. Uh, that 150K287 was so surfy on the groomers and pops on side hits. Uh, I'm athletic build, but 40 pounds over the limit, so it kept giving out on back bowls yesterday. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I feel you, man. Um, so, you know, that's basically the experience when you ride a board that's a little too small. You just don't get the stability. Um, but it's fun to be able to just manhandle a board like that. You know, you can just whip it around. You can press it. Um, you can really push it to the absolute limit. So sounds like you had a good time, man. I was actually riding my 87 today out at Breckenridge and I really enjoyed it. The 87 is a really fun free ride kind of powder board. I'm glad you had a good time, man. Wish we could have met up, but uh, hopefully you'll be back out next year or maybe even this year. The Riddick with the super chat just saying thank you for the advice. Thank you, Riddick. Appreciate you being here and thanks for the super chat, man. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get a burrito. Well, I'm gonna go to Patreon right after this. But after Patreon, I'm going to get a burrito. That's for certain. William Axtell with the super chat. Thanks, William. A hybrid board for all mountain slash free ride and pipe. Hybrid, all mountain free ride and pipe. Hmm. Well, the Jones Mountain Twin comes to mind. Um, so that's gonna be camber between the feet, rocker in the nose and tail. Um, Honestly, I don't know that I would recommend, actually, no, I take that back, the T-Rice Pro or even the LibTech TRS. Um, I think the TRS would actually be a lot of fun for that, the LibTech TRS. Um, I want to recommend the Ride Helix, even though that is more of a freestyle snowboard, um, but it, it's pretty aggressive. You got the ASIM side cut, it's full camber, it's got a stiff flex, uh, so that one would be really fun in the pipe, and you could make it work for all mountain and free ride. So uh, there's a few options for you, um, and yeah, boards kind of along those lines. I would say I wouldn't, I wouldn't get anything that's like freestyle specific unless it's really aggressive, like the Helix. Thanks for all the super chats, guys. Goggle tan is strong. It is. I haven't been wearing sunscreen. It's bad. I, I only wore sunscreen like two out of the last eight days. I'm cool with the goggle tan, though. I don't mind it. All right. Trent McAteer. McAteer. Hey, TJ, have you had the chance to ride the Never Summer West? If so, how does it compare to the LibTech TRS or Prototype 2? Um, so there's one big difference that in the West versus the TRS or the Prototype 2, and that is that it has a setback stance. So it's not going to have that same twin performance that you're going to get out of the TRS and the Prototype 2. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing. I also think it's a little bit stiffer than both of those boards. So a little bit more free ride powder leaning um, versus the TRS and the Prototype 2. Arfau. Hey TJ, what do you think about the ride kink for butters and also for carving? Um, I think it's a little, it, it's definitely doable. It's uh, carving, more better for carving than for butters just because they did throw some camber in the profile and it's stiffer than it used to be. So it's going to be a little bit harder to press out and get those butters going. But yeah, really fun snowboard. guys man we're so close to 150 likes guys if you guys haven't liked the video we just need 15 more that'd be so sick if we could get up there thank you guys and uh blob leon asking hey tj what board do you recommend for mainly park like rails um so for rails i'm definitely gonna put you i would recommend more of a, a softer flexing true twin snowboard so a couple of my favorites are gonna be the battalion disaster uh, the Battalion Global Warmer actually is also really, really fun for rails and for park. Um, 
You got the Capita Horoscope, that one's a lot of fun. Uh, the Lobster Jib Board, obviously gonna be really fun on the rails. Um, yeah, I think those are all pretty good options for you. I would say, you know, generally speaking, just a true twin with a softer flex is gonna treat you right. It's gonna allow you to lock into those rails and get those presses going. Uh, Martin asking, what computer do I use to edit the video? So I actually uh, last summer switched my computer to a mobile setup. So I edit on a laptop. Um, I got it custom made from this website called Exotic PC and I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I got like the mid-level uh, Sager computer um, and I maxed out all the components. Um, so I'm really, really happy with it. I definitely would recommend checking them out if you need a, an editing setup. They, they treated me right. The computer has been killing it. Flare Blitz, best volume shifted powder boards. I don't have like a archive of all those boards just off the top of my head, but the K287 is a, a volume shifted powder board and I've really been enjoying that one. So I, uh, I would recommend that one with confidence. I actually just wrote it today. It's super fun. I wrote it in some deep pow today. All right, guys. Daniel Vlogs, shout out. What's up, Daniel? Thanks for being here, man. Favorite lace system from Shelby? Traditional lace. I, uh, I'm still on traditional laces. I've, I, uh, I've never had boa boots. I'm thinking about it, but uh, I think I'm just gonna stick to the traditional lace. I'm just really happy with it. All right. All right, guys, so I am gonna do a quick speed round and I'm just gonna try to answer a bunch of questions really quickly as much as I can. All right, guys, here we go. Alex Flynn, boa or lace? Lace, for sure. Luna's DeBeat, do boards lose stiffness or flexibility over time? Uh, typically, yes, they do. Um, Burton does have their infinite ride technology, but uh, I've never ridden one for more than a season, so I'm not sure. Or I haven't even ridden one for one whole season. But typically, yes. Emily Redden, women's board for carving also can handle some powder days. Uh, the K2 Wild Heart. Uh, uh, oh, thanks, TJ. Uh, let's see. Miranda Hutchings, is the Burton Lux a good beginner board? I'm not familiar with the Burton Lux, unfortunately. Awesome Alf. Monarch next season? Uh, potentially, I was actually at Monarch a couple of weeks ago uh, just for a day with Evo, but uh, I'd like to go back for sure. Monarch's fun. Carlos Villanova, what do you think of the Evil Twin as a daily ride, pow, and carving? Thanks from Spain. Good all around board, more free rot, more freestyle leaning, but a good all around snowboard. Armando Alvarez, what's your favorite color? Purple. <laughs> Uh, Aaron Ballantine, best boarding company, Snowboard Pro Camp. I know that's not what you meant, but I'm not picking a favorite snowboard brand. Vince Powell Newman, K287 or Jones Mind Expander? Mind Expander. For POW, for pure POW, for free ride, the 87. Jack Barnhart, do you prefer bib or normal pants? I'm not sure yet. I think they both serve a purpose, but I think I like normal pants better. I do like my bibs though. Uh, Rob Gams, TJ, recommendations on stance setback for powder on true twin boards. Just set it back as far as you can without the stance getting too wide for you to handle. The Ugly Carrot, what do you think is the best all around snowboard? Check out the top five do it all snowboards video on the channel, I couldn't pick just one. Uh, Nano, any recommendations on boots, maybe brands for flat wide feet like mine? Um, 32 is a wide fit, Burton is a wide fit. I think those would be my top two brands to check out. William Ingram, stands for powder, uh, plus 15, negative 12. CJ Explored, iMovie versus Premiere versus Final Cut. I've actually used all of them. Final Cut and Premiere are very similar. Um, I, as long as you take the time to learn the shortcuts, um, they're both great. I personally use Premiere. 
Uh, Simone Willems, Burton step on, go or no go? If you're a casual rider and you want the convenience, go for it. If you're out there really shredding, you're out there a lot of days out of the year, I would not recommend them. Cloud Walker 99, how about developing your own snowboard? I would love to, or at least get like my favorite board with some custom graphics. Maybe, maybe that'll be coming, who knows? All right, last question, speed round is over. Who's gonna get the last question? Awesome Alf, you win. Best cheap bindings, the Union Flight Pro. Awesome guys, thank you for joining me here. Thank you for all the awesome questions. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you for the super chats. Thanks for watching the videos. I really appreciate it. It's been super, super fun out here. Great hanging out with you guys. I'm gonna wait about 15 minutes and I'm gonna hop over to Patreon if you wanna hang out. That's patreon.com forward slash board archive. Make sure to check out Kevin's as well. That's patreon.com forward slash snowboard pro camp. Also hit us up on Instagram. I'm at board archive. Kevin's at snowboard pro camp. Leave any questions I didn't get to down in the comments below on this video. I will be going through that and checking that out. So maybe you'll get an answer down there. Thank you guys for being here and uh, check out the next live stream coming at you this Friday with Kevin. See you guys.